Well, hello there. My name is Marley Bird, and in this video, I will teach you how to make the Knit Diamond Mosaic Cushion Cover. This is a free pattern available at yarnspirations.com. It uses burnap blanket yarn and a US size 10 and a half or six millimeter knitting needle. This is an intermediate pattern, and for that reason, I will be going over all of the little bits that I feel like you might need some extra help with. But as far as the overall construction or the seaming of the cushion cover, I'm pretty sure you know how to do that. So let's grab that free pattern and your materials and jump in. When we take a look at the pattern itself, it looks like there are a lot of word instructions. But as we look closer, it says that we are supposed to read the chart to complete each of the rows. It does tell us that when we slip our stitches, we wanna make sure that we slip them as if to purl, and we wanna make sure our yarn is on the wrong side of the fabric, whether it's in the front or in the back. You will also notice that the instructions for the color sequence are also listed here. We can see right here in the sample that the white color, the vintage white, is used throughout the entire piece. And we can see over here, vintage white is the B. So it would appear to me that we would use coal for this first 40 rows. We would use the malachite for the next 40 rows, and then we would go back to coal for the next 40 rows. And the whole time we are using the vintage white color. I only point that out because I tend to get really confused when patterns say to change colors here and change colors there. But when I break it down logically and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna use the white throughout. And then for the first 40, I'll use my, my coal color. The next 40, I'll use my green malachite color. And then I'll go back to my coal color for the last 40. That makes a lot more sense to me. So I wanted to make sure I pointed that out to you. You start off this pattern by working the front and the front is one full panel. The back of the cushion is actually separated into two bits. That way you have an opening to put the cushion in. It's really simple. There's not a whole lot of extra you have to know once you understand how to do the mosaic and read the chart. That's why I'm not gonna be going over that in this video. I'm more concerned about the actual mosaic stitches. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the chart since we've referenced it a couple times. It is on page two. It might seem really confusing and different than anything you've seen before, so let's take a closer look. When reading the chart, you will always start down here on the right, reading it from right to left for the right side rows. When you're working the wrong side rows, you read from left to right. Now, the two different colors that are here on the pattern will help you out as far as knowing these are the lighter shades I'm going to be working with, these are the darker shades I'm gonna be working with, these are the lighter shades, so on and so forth. So every two rows, you're going to be changing colors. That does not mean you have to cut your yarn and rejoin, you will simply carry your yarn up. As you work across the row, as you come to these stitches that look like a really long V, those are the stitches you're going to slip. That's what's gonna give you the mosaic look. When you're on the right side, you will slip the stitch as if to purl with your yarn in back. When you're on the wrong side, you'll slip the stitch as if to purl with the yarn in front. It's really that easy. There's not a whole lot of work to do. The wrong sides are actually easier because you'll know exactly which stitch to slip because it'll be the opposite color. Looking at this chart now, does it make a little bit more sense? On row one, you would just knit one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. You would slip one stitch as if to purl with the yarn and back, the next stitch as if to purl with the yarn and back, and then you would knit 18 stitches. You would repeat these 20 stitches two times. So you would go through this section once and go through this section twice. You'd be left with these few stitches. So you would slip one as if to purl with the yarn and back, slip one as if to purl with the yarn and back, and then knit to the end. When you go to the opposite side for row two, with your same color, you're not doing anything different, we're going to purl. We're gonna keep all of these in stockinette. So we'll purl the first one, two, three, four, five, six, slip one as if to purl with yarn in front, slip one as, with yarn in, slip one as if to purl with yarn in front, purl across 18, and then slip one as if to purl with yarn in front, slip one as if to purl with yarn in front, and then purl to the end. One easy way to remember where the yarn should be as you're slipping is always make sure the yarn is to the wrong side of the fabric. 
once you get through the first couple rows, it's going to be pretty darn easy. You'll just be like, all right, I got this. And you'll just work this pattern up in no time. The instructions tell us that we're supposed to use our color A and cast on 54 stitches and then purl the first row. I have actually gone ahead and done that plus I've worked the next two rows. So I cast on, I purled the first row, and then I've worked rows one and two. And you can see the brown here as it's popping through the sea of white, that is actually, um, those, those are actually the slipped stitches. So I'm ready to start what would be row three and four. So I will follow my chart and do that, but I'm gonna give you another little tip as far as following charts so that you don't lose your place. Whenever I'm working with the chart, I always have post-it notes and I mark off the rows that I have not worked yet. I leave the rows I've worked viewable and the reason is I can also see these same rows on my actual fabric as I'm looking down from my needles. If I'm ever lost in my row, I can say, okay, well, here's what I'm looking at below the row I'm on. Can I get a better idea of where I am based on the previous rows that I've done? So it's much better to mark off the rows above the row you're on versus the row below. So now that I have the post-it notes here, I can see I'm ready to start row three and I'm going to begin working across row three on my sample. So let me just put this right up there. I'm going to bring this in and I did have to cut my yarn here. You will not have to, I did, I had a big knot so I cut it. Um, so I am gonna have to rejoin. So I'm rejoining and I'm using Burnap Blanket Yarn and when I rejoin, I just hold my yarn right up next to it. You guys know how to do that. And we will begin. So I'm using my size 10 and a half needles and I'm using circulars because it's easier to have all the stitches on there. And it looks like I will knit the first two. So I will knit one and two. And now I will slip one as if to purl. So I'm going into the next one as if to purl with my yarn in back, because that's the wrong side of my fabric, so I'll make sure my yarn is in back. So I slip one as if to purl, slip the next one as if to purl, and the yarn is in back. Now I carry on and I have to knit one, two, three, four, five, six, so I knit six. One, two, three, and that takes me over my slip stitches, which is fine. Four, five, and six. Now, let me get my cord going here. I have quite a few stitches here that will be slipped as I'm looking at my chart there. So let's work through this together. It looks like with my yarn in back, I will slip one as if to purl, two as if to purl, and then I knit the next one. Notice I am not pulling that strand super tight across those slip stitches. I wanna make sure that those stitches are still relaxed and I still have a good um, separation between everything. It looks really consistent, okay? So you wanna make sure of that. I slip one, I knit the next one. I slip one, I knit the next two. So there's one and two. And then slip one and knit one. Slip one and knit one and slip two see here slip two and then knit two and that brings me to the end of my repeat so that was my 20 stitch repeat so what I would do now is I go back to the start right here not this start but right here okay so right there so I would knit one two three four and then I jump into those slip stitches again if you wanted to put a stitch marker right there to help you remember that this is where the stitch repeat repeats itself, you absolutely could do that. It's also a great way to be able to double check that you haven't missed a stitch or gone over a stitch at some point, okay? Um, so you can put a place marker there if you want to signify that that's the end of one repeat. But I don't think I need one. I'm gonna go ahead and knit the next four. So one, two, three, and four. Then I slip as if to purl, slip as if to purl, put those on my right hand needle, make sure this is across the back, nice and even, so everything looks even. I will knit one, 
slip, knit, and then slip, let's get my stitches up here, slip, knit two. If you're ever stuck, you can always kind of spread it out and say, okay, so there are my two white ones. I can tell that those are those two. And then, so one, two, and then there's a knit and a slip and a knit and a slip and knit two. And then I have a slip, knit, slip. So I have a slip, knit, slip, and then knit one, slip two, knit two. Oops. Knit one, knit two. And that brings me to the end of my second repeat. So I'm now no longer going to repeat this part. I'm going to come down here and do this section here. So I will knit four, one, two, three, and four, slip and slip, and then knit two. At the end of my row, what I have on my needles should be a good representation of what I am looking at that row. So that would be row three, okay? Now, yes, I did block off everything above row four. That's because three and four are the same as far as the look of them, and it just makes it easier to see. And you're gonna see what I, what I mean here in just a second, okay, you ready? So I'm gonna turn my work. I don't have to move my post-it notes yet because just as I mentioned, I have row four visible. And I'm keeping my fabric in stockinette, so I'm going to purl. And I really don't have to look at my chart much for this one because I know anytime I see the color I'm using on my needle, I'll purl it. And when I see the color I'm not using, I'm gonna slip it. Now before, remember we had our yarn in back and we slipped these stitches, but we don't want our strand to be on the right side of our fabric. So you bring it to the front and you slip the stitches of the opposite color. And then you purl the stitches that are of the same color. See how I'm not even having to look at the chart? I could just put that away and it would be just fine. Purl those and then I slip the ones of the opposite color. And as long as I do this, I will be right on track for where I need to be when I get to the end of the row. And when I get to the end of the row, it'll be time to change colors and I will go to the next row of my pattern. So I do wanna to get to the end of this row to show you how to carry up your color along the side. So let's get down there and do that. The biggest thing with mosaic, you guys, is just making sure you are consistent with your tension and that your floats, that's what you're doing, these are floats as you're carrying them behind your slipped stitches. Make sure they are not pulled too snug. Otherwise your fabric will pucker and you don't want that. You want it to lay nice and flat. All right, so let's get to the end of this. It's pretty simple. I feel like once you get through these first couple rows and I mean, you're just, you're off to the races at that point. You can do, you can do anything. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna be looking at mosaic patterns in a whole new light. And she's like, I gotta make that. Cause mosaic stitches are a lot of fun to create. So let me get some more yarn here. They make really nice geometric patterns for sure. Okay, so I'm to the end, I purl, I can turn my work. You can take a peek at what we have here. Let's make sure everything's nice and neat here. Now, doesn't look like much yet, but it's really becoming something. So what I would do here is I would take my post-it notes, I would move them up. So I move them up two rows, remember, because I like to be able to see both of the rows for the next color. If this were any other chart, I would just move it up one row, but it's much easier to move it up two rows when I'm working with mosaic. Now I can see here, I'm back to my lighter shade. So that would be my white color, which is perfect because it's right down here waiting for me Oop, as everything moves. So I can simply drop my brown, pick up my white, 
and then continue on working the pattern with the white and it's that easy. As you're carrying this up, just like we're careful with the floats in the back, you're careful making sure that this isn't pulled just like that. You wanna make sure it just kind of, just floats up nice and comfortably so you don't get a pucker. I like to hold any of my tails or anything that I have over here, I like to hold the opposite color just to hold it in place so it doesn't let that stitch get overextended. And then I start, so this would be knit four. And then I slip and slip. Remember my yarn is in back this time because I'm looking at the front of my fabric. And then I knit two. And then slip and slip and so on, okay? Can you see how that works up? This pattern is written using three different colors of yarn, but if you just wanted to use two throughout the entire cushion cover, you absolutely could do that. Just going by the fact that the color white is used throughout the piece and it only requires one ball, that leads me to believe that you could just use one ball of another color and make this very lovely piece. Now that you know how to do the mosaic stitch, you know how to read the chart, I am confident you could tackle this cushion cover in no time. I can't wait to see yours. Make sure you share with us on social media. Use hashtag Yarnspirations or hashtag Marley Bird because I would love to come see your work and smash your like button. I'm Marley Bird for Yarnspirations.com. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.